Hi everybody, this is Bricky. Uh, this is going to be a mostly audio experience. There will be background footage in the back. However, if this is something you like to listen to in the car, at the gym, whatever, you can go ahead and throw it on and listen to it in the background. The video footage is simply to enhance any points I make, not necessarily to actually be required for the viewing experience, so to speak. So I was an extremely fortunate person to receive a code for Space Marine 2 a few days ago roughly on August 27th, in fact, along with a lot of other press. Uh, I actually don't really get codes for things like this because I'm not necessarily a traditional ga video game reviewer or video game news journalist, et cetera, et cetera. And so I normally don't get early codes like this, but naturally Space Marine 2, high profile Warhammer game, I got one and I grinded it out a pretty substantial deal. In fact, I am recording this roughly on August 28th, the day after, uh, after maybe 25 or so hours with the game. As in it in my library, I have played 11 hours total of Space Marine 2 as of recording this. Uh, and I wanted to just regurgitate thoughts on the game. I do not have a full review necessarily, yet I will be making a big main channel review in a bit. I'm assuming it'll take a little bit of time, but for the most part, this is coming out September 4th because that is when the embargo is up. And for the most part, this is the most amount of Space Marine 2 I'm going to be able to play because I am leaving for PAX West. And more importantly, any other thing I could play doesn't necessarily matter much because you can't play multiplayer right now as the only people currently playing this are most likely journalists and other members of the press that I well, can't easily match make with, obviously, but also because I have already completed the entire story campaign and done multiple missions co-op with some friends. So, well, colleagues, I suppose. So I have a bit of a discussion for it, a, a little in first impression review, and as far as I'm concerned, a stream of consciousness. This is just me talking. Uh, I have lots of opinions. I have many things on my mind about this game, but I'm just ge generally throwing it out with a little bit of background footage. There will not be any spoilers except for the things shown on the trailers to begin with, like the enemies, for example. You may have realized that there is another enemy in this game that is not the Tyranids. If you didn't know that, then maybe just turn off the video because wow you really are living under a rock but that's basically the most uh, I'll be spoiling so there really isn't any spoilers for this video so the campaign for Space Marine 2 took me about eight to so hours without doing the side missions the way the campaign is structured is that there is a main story mode that follows you as Titus as well as your two squad mates Gabrielle and Sarian Caron Carion Karen I, I don't quite remember. It's like Gab it's Gabriel, Gabriel, and, and Titus, uh, and then one other. Uh, I don't remember their names very well, and that'll be obvious uh, later on. It'll become much more apparent in a bit. And then they go out and they do their usual thing. Titus has been demoted to lieutenant after Space Marine 1, and he is now going to deal with the Terran invasion fleet on the planet of, I forget its name, it's a jungle planet. There are three planets that you go to throughout the course of the game. I don't remember their names, uh, but... It, it's not like it really matters. It's just three different types of planets that help you adjust the scenery a bit. That was one of the uh, bigger complaints I have with Space Marine 1 is that Grya was a giant forge world and therefore it is uh, very samey. Now, granted, Imperial aesthetic is also very samey. It's not like you're doing a big sprawling adventure, but regardless. So that is the general gist. And uh, yeah, Tyranids are here. You're an Ultramarine. Ultramarines need to kill and that's the whole vibe. Now, the way it's structured is that Titus and gang go out and do a whole bunch of missions throughout the course of these three planets, and you always play as Titus when you do. Uh, now, this, I believe, can be co-opt as well, the story missions, that is. However, uh, there is, you know, obviously Titus is the character, so there's Titus. Titus has the special ability of just yelling really loudly for Ultramar and getting a little bit stronger and healing and doing all that kind of fun stuff. But for the most part, he's your bread and butter, third person shooter style Marine. There is also side missions you can do. And I'm including these as part of the campaign because these are side missions where you play as other squads doing objectives that are parallel to the main story. There are six missions and they have different kinds of things. Like for example, 
there is a mission in which Titus needs to rescue a, a Arch Magos or some fancy Magos because uh, he has some, but because he, he won't leave because his data, yada, yada. However, the Tyranids are fast approaching and therefore your secondary group has to go blow up a Prometh uh, Promethean refinery and that'll slow the Tyranids advance to help you save the Magos. In the actual game, you as Titus go do stuff with the Magos. However, in the background comms, you'll have them say like, oh, Lieutenant, we have completed the mission. The Prometheum is there. Uh, you know, the Tyranids have been slowed. And then that's about all that happens. But then you can go play th from their perspective and go do the Prometheum mission. And those missions serve as your co-op repeatable missions. Those are the ones that have all of the XP, all of the upgrades, the buffs, and the things you do with your friends for the most part. That's generally how the campaign works. And so I did only about one of the six side missions and beat the campaign in about eight hours. I would imagine if you did every side mission as well as the main story campaign, it would take you about 11 to 12 hours I'd garner. Uh, that being said, when I say side missions, missions they aren't like real side missions they're a lot more along the lines of just seeing a different perspective of stuff going on it's not like you're losing out on the story this doesn't really change the story or anything like that it's not that kind of game now let's talk about the campaign a little bit because this is one of those things where what you're looking for in this game is going to vary heavily on what or let's rephrase that whether or not you like this game is going to vary heavily on what you bought this game to do. And that's that's the biggest part, is when you go into buying Space Marine 2, what are your expectations? Are you expecting a game with the same kind of just murder, gore, death, and destruction that Space Marine 1 brought you? Uh, Space Marine 1 is not known for its particularly great story, or anything of that nature. It's generally just generic marine guys killing things and yelling generic space marine things. It's them being like, we must protect the Auspex in order to gain a foothold against the orcs. And then the entire game you're yelling, die Zeno's filth for the, go the blessed God Emperor will not see your life continue this day. And then you just repeat that over and over and over again until the end of the game. That's basically Space Marine 1. Now, if you were hoping for something a bit more advanced than that, if you were wanted a bit more of an expanded story with a bit more in terms of characterization, you know, characters, squad mates, a bit more of like a backstory, some, some turmoil, that kind of stuff, then you would be sorely mistaken. Space Marine 2 is a 2010s Call of Duty campaign. It is a collection of cutscenes that are paced not very well, end too quickly, and talk about very boring topics the entire time your teammates, the, you know, Gabrielle and I forget name, basically spend the entire game doing the usual thing of death to the heretic, death to the Xenos, may the God Emperor's light bless me, over and over again until the entire game is over. Occasionally, one of them does the Leandros thing where he's like, hmm, Titus, you're kind of a sussy, sussy bitch. You vented, you're so sus. And that's kind of all that happens for the most part. Uh, the campaign's story and characters, I would consider not very good. Straight up mediocre. And that is the part I was the most upset about. Um, because... On the other hand, the gameplay is pretty darn fun. However, it's how much of that gameplay are you willing to enjoy with such a bare bones characterization and storyline. Now, this isn't the entire campaign. In fact, I'd argue that the campaign shows some really good promise occasionally. Very often the second half of the game is where you get the most promise. And it's unfortunate because it feels like a lot of that intrigue is used and then removed so damn quickly that you just generally think like, ah, oh, they could have done more with this. And that's kind of the feeling I got every time. We would occasionally get a really good scene or some kind of much more decent intrigue. And then you think, it would just end. And then you'd think, oh, God damn it. I think I thought we would do more with this. And that's over and over until the campaign ends. I was hoping for more characterization. I was hoping for more story. I was hoping for just an upgraded version of that. But, but no, this is 
a 2010s video game. This is Space Marine 1 again. I, honestly, though, I'd almost argue that Space Marine 1 had better paced cutscenes and a better characterization than this game. Uh, and that's that's saying a lot because I don't hold Space Marine 1 as some pillar of writing. It's something that I just was not huge on, and I, I definitely expected more. So... The question on if you're there because you wanted a really interesting story and characters, I'm sorry, that's probably a big no. There are moments, and in fact, if I had to garner any kind of guess, I would bet that this game is going to be remembered for its small side characters than its actual characters. There's two examples, like actually three. The first one, and this is what we talked about earlier, is that the Thousand Sons are in the game. Right, they're in the trailer. They're in the trailers. They're in the marketing material. The Thousand Suns are in the game. Now, this is obviously fine. There's a Thousand Suns. Uh, what would you call him? Chaos Lord, Exalted Sorcerer, uh, Chaos Lord on disc, whatever you want to call it. Uh, big villain guy. He arrives like halfway through the game, uh, two thirds maybe through the game, uh, and he's really not that interesting overall. He's just a maniacal chaos guy. But the dude's voice actor owed rent. The man is hamming it up. It reminds me a little bit of like Emperor Palpatine. Not because he's like Palpatine, but because every time I see Ian McDermott on screen doing his like, and the dark side, he's just such a goober. He's so fun to watch because he's so funny that this is how that chaos guy goes. And if you're a Thousand Sons fan, you're going to be like clapping your hands the entire time because he just goes on these tirades about like the false emperor betrayed us and Nike is a bunch of bullshit. And you're sitting there like, yes, yes, get them, get them. You tell those blueberries. Uh, and it's, it's great. He himself, his voice actor just murders the role, even if he as a character is not that interesting at all. But God damn, does he give a performance? Um, there's also two other characters I can think of. One of them is a guy I'm calling Baneblade Bill. Baneblade Bill is a random guardsman on a Baneblade who is giving a speech to his men like about halfway through the game. And it's the coolest speech I've ever heard. The guy also clearly owed rent and he's putting together game of the year dialogue for this random guy on a Baneblade. Absolutely awesome. Love this guy to death. And lastly is Dave the Dreadnought. Uh, near the end of the game, there's a Redemptor Dreadnought, and it does some cool stuff. And he, like, has five minutes of screen time. And in those five minutes, he does the most badass shit I have ever seen. And then just, like, pieces out. It's kind of awesome. So, yeah, the, the Thousand Suns villain guy, Baneblade Bill, and Dave the Dreadnought, those are the characters that I feel like people will remember the most because they just have, like, Boba Fett syndrome. They're on screen for five minutes max, not even. They give the coolest performances ever. Ever, and then they just peace out and I'm like what a badass you know like like what a cool bunch of characters but that's the best parts of the campaign in terms of the characterization and it is a little unfortunate so that's why I mentioned earlier how important is this gameplay because you're going to be doing a lot of it and I want to make the I want to make no reservations here the gameplay you are not playing a third person shooter you are playing God of War if you leave with anything, leave with that. You are not playing a first-person shooter. You are playing God of War 4 for the PlayStation. That actually reminds me, if you do play this game, do not use mouse and keyboard. Use gamepad. It is monstrously better. However, I noticed there's no snap aim, which is wild to me. I mean, you don't have, need to have it in PvP, but I, I didn't see a setting for snap aim. So you could snap on to like certain enemies. I didn't see that. I'm a little shocked. I, I'm a little shocked by that one. Uh, maybe it'll be added later or maybe I missed it. But just of all the things, it was like, whoosh. It was something else. But yeah, you're basically, basically playing God of War. You're going to go around shooting a bunch of stuff and doing your guns and all that fun jazz. But then things are going to get close and you're going to 
beat the ever living shit out of them. You, uh, and then when you do, they will hit you with attacks that glow blue. And when they glow blue, you press a button to parry. And then if they glow red, you dodge instead of parry and you get them, uh, get them to low enough HP to where then you execute them for health and, uh, you know, to kill them and stuff. It's God of War. It plays like God of War. It feels like God of War. There's happens to be third person shooter aspects in it, but it's basically just God of War. And how much you vibe with that combat is going to be the true test of whether or not you like Space Marine 2, because you do that combat a lot. That combat is all there is, and you better like it. If you don't like the combat, you're going to get bored really fast, because unfortunately... All of the cool stuff that you see in the game's marketing, all of the uh, upgrades and perk trees and customization and character upgrades and all that stuff does not happen in the campaign. If you are doing the story mode, not the side missions, the side missions is where you grind, but if you're doing the story mode with Titus, you do not get any XP. And Titus does not have upgrades. Titus is a blank slate the entire campaign. You don't get upgrades. You don't get powers. You don't get any buffs. You don't get XP. You don't get any of that. You just get Titus. And that really starts to grow thin after some time. It grows very thin, actually. And it's one of the things that I started to feel later on in the, in the game. Now, the gameplay of... Space Marine 2, I actually do vibe with a decent amount. It's a very, mm, how you say, not, not, not generic. It's, um, you do it a lot. It can get repetitive. It can certainly get repetitive after some time, but I fuck with it. And because I do, I don't necessarily mind it too much. But I think that's one of the issues that I ran into with the campaign is because there's no experience, no customization, no anything. The only customization you get as Titus is primary, secondary, and melee weapon. Then because of that, it's just doing combat. And it almost kind of makes me wish we had more gimmicks. That's kind of a strange thing to ask for, right? I look back at Titanfall 2, one of the best first-person shooter games of all time, right? One of the best campaigns ever. Their entire campaign is like four hours long, and it's a pretty regular shooty bang bang, right? But the thing about Titanfall 2's campaign is that every map, every mission had some kind of fun gimmick. Every level had some weirdness to it. It almost reminds me of like Resident Evil 4. You know, every area you went to had some kind of weird gimmick to it, and that kept things fresh. Gimmicks are annoying when you have tons of upgrades because when you have tons of upgrades, you end up having to be stripped of them for your cool gimmick. And that's just, you know, not very fun in a way. But with this situation, because there are no upgrades, I wanted more weird stuff like that. This is going to sound insane. This is going to sound absolutely crazy. I almost wished there was a turret section, I, which is just, I know, it's so weird to say out loud in this day and age, but... I needed something to break up from the monotony. There's a couple cool moments. There's one where you jump from a ship with a jetpack and you have to like dodge debris. That was one of the coolest parts of the game because it was a cool little gimmick, a little side bit. Um, there's like a part where you get a pyre blaster to burn some river swarms that overstayed its welcome a little bit, but it was a fun idea and I liked doing it. I needed more of those gimmicks to mix up the gameplay. Uh, and unfortunately, I didn't really get it, so the game kind of ra uh, ran a bit thin. But playing the game co-op with friends, I was like, hey, uh, you know, not gonna lie, maybe this is fine because I'm just enjoying playing this with friends, shooting the shit as we murder everything in sight like a good servant of the Emperor should. And it's come to the point where after beating the campaign, after playing some missions with some friends and then leveling up a little bit and seeing the perk trees, I'm realizing Space Marine 2 is going to have the exact same question that Darktide has, which is, is the gameplay loop and running missions fun enough and not repetitive enough to hold the game up? Because the campaign alone is a fine 
six or six and a half out of 10, you know, you roll through it, you enjoy yourself, you get a couple soy jack moments where you, you make a big pogging face and you point, and you're like, whoa, it's that thing. It's that, it's that cool thing from Warhammer that I know. Whoa, it's that character. Oh my God. There's a couple of those. And you know, if that's like good for you, awesome, but it's not quite enough to sustain me for the price tag. So does the gameplay with friends and the leveling progression system is that enough to keep the game, you know, happy in your eyes? And maybe it is, maybe it isn't. That's kind of for you to determine. I can't really tell yet because uh, it's, you know, it's been, you know, campaign and stuff. It's been like 12 or so hours of playing, etc. But I'm not, you know, I'm not like 45 hours in or something like that to determine, yeah, the gameplay loop is good or bad or the end game needs work or et cetera, et cetera, right? The higher difficulties, so on and so forth. And, um... Yeah, that's kind of where my head's at right now. I don't I think the campaign is a bit of a letdown, but the in terms of story and stuff, but there are some really impressive sequences. Uh the visuals are incredible. Uh, there's a part in the middle where you're going up like a sky lift and the gargoyles are trying to rip apart the chains, and that looks super cool. The game runs very well. It's very well optimized. Uh, it chugs a bit near the end, but for me, it ran very well on my machine, which I was quite happy about. You know, it, it might it might chug a bit, but hey, it that's what happens. Sometimes it occurs. Well, at least at the end of the game. You'll know why when you get to the end of the game. Holy crap. The sound mixing is probably my biggest technical complaint. I genuinely think that just the the sound mi mixing in general is is really, really bad. Uh, it's, it's kind of crazy how quickly your teammates will be saying something and then gunfire will just drown them all out immediately and you miss out on dialogue. Um, none of the dialogue was really that important to begin with. For the most part, 95% of the dialogue is just die Xenos scum and we are the servants of the emperor. Like for example, they they have those little audio data logs similar to Bioshock and with those data logs, you you know, when you listen to them in Bioshock and games like that, they tend to quiet the rest of the game to help you hear them. They don't do that in here. They just kind of play the data, the data log, which is really funny to me because then like someone starts talking and then you start shooting Tyranids and you just can't hear a goddamn word. You have no idea what's happening. And it's uh, it's really, really funny. The sound mixing, I think, is a huge up it needs a huge change because it's very rough at the moment and that might come with a day one patch but um, that's definitely something I've, i felt the most when it comes to the technical aspects of the video game other than that uh the warhammer aspect of it for my warhammer nerds out there people like me who engage in the hobby a lot and collect the miniatures this game is extremely primaris coded that's something that i found rather interesting firstborn is basically non-existent in this game um, you'll find out within the first hour of the game how Primaris coded it is, and I find it to be fascinating that it is that way because it's it's just interesting to see the lengths they go. You know, I think I saw one Rhino and one Predator in the whole game. There is the Bolt Carbine, the classic Bolter, but outside of the classic Bolter, there is only Primaris weapons. There's stalker bolt rifle, bolt carbine, bolt launcher with grenade. Uh, there's heavy bolt rifle. There's no plasma gun. There's the plasma incinerator. There's no melta gun. There's the melta rifle. Uh, I guess there's the heavy bolter, so there is that. But, you know, it's the, and I guess the multi melta and stuff. But then it's like the bolt pistol, the plasma pistol, and the heavy bolt pistol. They're adding a Volkite pistol in the future, I guess, with one of their roadmaps kind of thing. Um, you see repulsors, you see repulsor executioners, you see redemptor dreadnoughts, but you don't see box dreadnoughts. You see Phobos armor and, and blade guard champions. But yeah, it's very Primaris coded. It's almost nothing but Primaris, which I found to be rather fascinating. You know, it's not like, like I don't really care. I'm not one of those kind of like firstborn people who is super into firstborn. It is what it is. But I, I just was a little bit surprised it was that firstborn coded you know other than that uh, i'm sure you're wondering how they do the lore if they actually do a pretty good job at maintaining the 40k aesthetic that's the one thing i think that they did the best it is a very 40k faithful game now 
there are a lot of things that they have to take for liberty because it's a video game. Like the amount of shit you kill, like, no, no space marine lieutenant, no matter how cool you are, should be killing 500 Tyranid warriors, multiple zone thropes, and the, and more, right? Like it just doesn't happen, uh, in, gener in generality. But that's kind of like a nitpick. It's a video game, you know. You, you gotta do video game stuff. Like it's kind of funny when you fight the Thousand Suns, you kill a lot of Rubric Marines. The Rubric Marine is basically the Tyranid warrior. So by the end of it, you've killed like 400 of the Thousand Suns, which is just hilarious because it's like oh god we've basically wiped out the thousand suns which is really funny but there are a lot of just really good uses of the 40k ip uh it looks good it looks correct the scaling is incredible and impressive uh you can see kind of how everything operates and how loud it is and how clunky some of the forge worlds and the the locations are just big and loud and just so grandiose and that combination of everything is a factory and then everything else the church and everything is covered in candles and they they do a really good job with the 40k aesthetic also just some small things that are kind of fun like uh, if you kill a Tyranid warrior, all the Termagants around it die as well because the, the synapse pulse that comes from the Tyranid warrior breaks and it kills or like kills or disorients all the Termagants, which is neat. A really cool touch is that when you fight Rubric Marines and you kill them, their armor kind of like busts apart, almost like Lego pieces and dust just comes out because, you know, all is dust. Thanks, Aramin, you bitch. But if you, there's a couple... Uh, thousand sun sorcerers and when you kill them they bleed because of course they're still flesh and blood so just just some good some good insight like that right there's a lot of that fun stuff uh it's pretty amazing about until the last hour the last hour really kind of graded on me because when i was playing the last hour i i had uh, it's, i can't spoil but there was a lot of like is that what I think it is? And are we where I think we are? Because if we're where we think we are, and that's what I think it is, we've gone completely off the rails, and now we're not very faithful to the 40k world. Um, because, yeah, when you get to the end, you'll you'll be like, how the hell is this happening? Uh, so there's a little bit of that going on. <laughs> and, you know, you could, when you play the game, let me know if you think I'm right or not, because that's uh, I was playing and I was like, what the fuck is going on? But other than that, other than that, uh, the 40k aesthetic is nailed pretty per pretty perfectly. Actually, it's uh, they really did a damn good job with that. Like I said earlier, and, and this is like just me rambling, as I mentioned, the game really comes down to what you're looking for. If you want a beat 'em up shooter combo with a 40k co uh, coat of paint that reminds you of like 2008 era Call of Duty campaigns, like Modern Warfare 3. Black Ops 2 COD campaigns where it's not particularly in depth and kind of just there to make you shoot stuff, then I think you'll be perfectly happy. I think you'll end up being very, very pleased with what you got. And, uh, you know, you'll go and kill a bunch of uh, Tyranids and a bunch of uh, Thousand Suns and you'll have a grand old time. Uh, if you were hoping for a little bit more, a bit more in terms of character a bit more in terms of story then uh, unfortunately i i don't think this is the one i think uh, i think the that kind of part dropped the ball and the question at the end is going to really come down to whether or not the gameplay loop is enough for you to keep playing it and want to keep loading in it has the same issue that dark tide has is it enough is this enough for me i don't know we'll see we'll see this is like my my general just honest opinions um, for those of you who are, who are know me in my Warhammer stuff, you know that I'm pretty skeptical when it comes to Warhammer projects, and I'm pretty, I think I'm pretty harsh on them at times. So maybe I may be a little bit too harsh with this at the moment, but maybe not like too harsh, but like, you know, expect me to be harsh because that's that's what I'm I'm intentionally being. Like I, I I look at it with a bit more scrutiny than most do. Well, maybe not most do, but from my compatriots that I remember. So um, you know. Give it a shot yourself, you know, try it out, see if you like it. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, maybe I'm not wrong, but the gameplay is totally enough for you. Or maybe, you know, who knows? Honestly, who knows? I, I think I care most about just making sure that you all get like a, a an honest opinion on the game. And I'm trying to express that the best I can without seeming like too dour. 
and understanding that I this is kind of like what I was looking for comparatively. And it's like, ah, well, this might not be the same, you know? It all depends on, on you more than anything. But other than that, we'll see how it turns out. Uh, we'll see how the sales numbers do. We'll see how people consider it. I give it like a tentative recommendation. I give it a recommendation so long as you know what you're getting into and you're not expecting Shakespeare, which, I mean, in fairness, you probably weren't to begin with. But, you know, if you were hoping for something with a bit more... Uh, in terms of character and stuff than the first Space Marine game, I that's not quite the case. It is the first Space Marine game, just again. And, um, you know, that's where it's at. So, anyway, uh, other than that, I will be playing the game a decent amount on stream uh, after this video comes out. You can check me out at twitch.tv slash bricky, or I also stream here on this channel. We do like a dual stream. So you can check it out. And then that's about all I got. So uh, thank you very much for listening, and I'll see you around.